Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> and we're back today at the Rare Air Volkswagen Show that I try to cover each year. This year, I hardly got covered at all because, well, I worked the show. I did all the data entry for the judging system, and uh, I took all the pictures of every single car on the show. And you can find those results up on our website, rareairvw.com. It's just, it was a hump today. I mean, I started early this morning about 8 o'clock, and I didn't finish until we read off and announced all of the show results. Had a couple of little headaches and little problems with everything uh, as far as the judging system that I built, because again, we made a lot of changes on it this year, but for the most part, it worked. It worked. I'm very happy with it. But here you're going to see some of the show highlights that I'm finally getting the opportunity to show you uh, <laughs> before we wrap everything up, before everybody goes home. And of course, Ruby's here. And uh, a little something good happened to Ruby today. So we're going to talk about that right after the intro. So don't forget, linky, likey, comment, subscribe, plug that thingle belly, and we'll be back in just a minute. This is a Volkswagen Puma, the first one I have ever seen. Extremely rare here in the United States. Brazil manufactured. This one is a 1978 brought here to America and uh, had a huge restoration done on it. Absolutely gorgeous. It's an award winner here at our Volkswagen show and they even had the chance to sit in it. You uh, wouldn't believe just how roomy it is when you actually do get in there, but for somebody like me, headroom was incredibly limited, but the worst problem I have is getting my knees under the steering wheel. <laughs> we're gonna have a look in the engine compartment in just a second here. There it is. Oh, it's an upright, like a Type 1. Yep, Type 1 motor. I expected to find a Type 3 in there. It actually fit. Incredible. But they have the low profile fan shroud for the fit underneath the deck and the twin carbs. Yeah, so nice square job. That, 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 that's, that is great. And performance from the factory with the twin carbs. A little one <laughs> But still, that's performance versus the single Solex. <laughs> that is just awesome. And it's just, uh, it's like a bus seal around the engine there. Yeah, my mechanic did that. I guess that's the best way to do it. Yeah, that's a, uh, I did not expect to see that. I really thought I'd see a Type 3 in there. Wow. All right. And, you know, no gills on the side. I guess uh, I should have noticed that. If it had those, I would have said it was more of a Type 3 then. <laughs> How does the air get in? Through the uh, through the louvers on the deck lid. Okay, that makes sense. It comes in from under there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All four, all four, six, uh -huh. four. Fantastic. Is there a hood up front? Yes. Really? So it has a trunk up there, or a frunk as some people like to call it. There you go. Typical Beetle gas tank. Yep, Spare tires short. down below. Yeah, neck is a little short on here, isn't it? In fact, it's in a different spot. Because the later models typically went in over here through a, a hatch over on that side, and the earlier ones were up front. I think the 67s in that were on the other side. Yep. But I have, That's uh, exactly right. Puma this gas is, cap? Yeah, check that out. And my evil Puma. Gotta get the evil Puma up front. <laughs> And license plate. Suits the build. If you look at it from the doors up, it looks like a Ferrari Dino. So the paint code is actually a factory PPG Ferrari paint code. No kidding. Rosicosa Red. Did uh, Volkswagen do that originally for the Puma, or is that just your choice? Personal choice. Okay, it looks great. It looks great. I like it. I like it a lot. Of course, on the inside, you... that door throws me. A little different than what I'm used to. <laughs> Pretty simple Volkswagen style interior. A little more modernized though, a little more sporty. Gene Berg shifter with car seats. Yeah, here it is. That custom made. Yeah, this thing is too cool. Yeah. Yeah. Lucky dog. Yeah, yeah, how low that seat is to the floor. It probably only sits about, well, that's my fist is about four inches, four inch and a half inches wide, so it sits barely six inches. And then once you compress this down, It'll be less than four inches from the floor, so that's that is just incredible, absolutely incredible. What's in the back? You know, there would be your trunk. No back seat back there, so that's your storage area. It does have a glove box? Typical Volkswagen door controls. Typical Volkswagen armrest. Uh, 
I love this thing completely and absolutely adore it. Too awesome. When was the last time you guys got to see one of these? <laughs> Bus tail lights back here. A lot of off-the-shelf parts used for this car. Typical 4x130 lug pattern wheels. It's even typical Volkswagen door latch stuff. <laughs> door handle is obviously special to this car, as is something like mirrors and windows. Yeah, I love this car. I'm so glad he came out. Took a ride from Jacksonville, so it was a good six hours for him. Been a long drive. I've done that one many, many times before for work. And he brought this thing all the way out. I just love it. Really love this car. Well, I worked my ass off on this show, but I figure I need to at least get a little bit of video footage of Ruby as I brought her out here. You know, she always had kind of a dull paint, but this time I just polished the crap out of her and she uh, <laughs> she shined up pretty good. I put her carpet back in the trunk, or the rear trunk, I should say. Engine, I cleaned it up eh, pretty good. I could have done a little touch-up paint, but I didn't. But you guys are probably wondering, hey, just how did I do? Well, it's actually, well, I dropped it. <laughs> of course it did. <laughs> Here it is. Rear Air VW Club. First place, that's right. Ruby got first place. And I think that's uh, two years in a row. Winner, winner. I put a lot of effort into this car this year to clean her up. I really did, really did. I mean, I busted my hump with this thing yesterday. I spent all day just cleaning, and it's still not quite 100%. There's still a lot of things that I missed, and her paint is a little imperfect anyway, but uh, I'm just overjoyed. Just way overjoyed, I'm so happy. So thanks everyone that supported me. Thanks to Rare Air. Uh, if you want to see the show results, visit rareairvw.com and look for the button that says uh, the 2020 show results and you'll get to see them. Just to give you a little size comparison here. <laughs> big difference. Big, big difference. And the wheelbase is much longer on the Type 3. Puma's just been shortened enough. See, here it is. How about that? <laughs> Fella's about as, well, a little bit shorter than I am. I'm just a little bit taller. He comes in a little heavier than I do, but he, uh, he manages to squeeze in there just like I did. A little faster though, because he's a professional at it. I'm still learning. Of course, you always get every person calling me when I'm trying to record a video. You know how it goes. And he's got a special trailer that was actually built just for pulling Porsche 356s and Volkswagens, believe it or not. It's got uh, rabbit wheels on it even. Uh-oh. Ooh, that front bumper was close. But again, it was designed for pulling little Porsche 356s and things, so uh, he didn't scrape or nothing, but it was close. Really close. There it is. Pretty cool trailer, though. I'd love to get one myself. Possibly aluminum if I could. I want something as light as possible because I'd like to tow it behind the bus with Eleanor on it. Yes, that's right. You heard that. Awesome car. Awesome car. <laughs> Thanks so much. Where?
Oh, I loved it. Here's our best of show. 1958 Beetle. Absolutely spotless. Just beautiful two-tone car. Pretty radical custom. Got some really, really nice seats in there. Perforated. All right. Yes, sir. Beautiful Thank color. Not only was it the best of show winner, but it was one of my favorites today. <laughs> How are you? Good, let me get out. <laughs> Beautiful car. This is the Ash Kicker, and this car is absolutely enormous. Just by comparison, here's a stock Beetle next to it. Now this course looks bigger because it's perspective, but let me go back the other way and let you see what I'm looking at. <laughs> of course you got a terrible glare, but there it is. And I'll put a picture of Ruby up on the screen park next to it just the same. It belongs to Chris out of Louisiana. And uh, I've been talking to him for the last, uh, I guess about three years and finally got him out to the show and I'm so glad he did. He won uh, best of class for Baja. We actually opened up a special Baja class just for him and all the Bajas that came in the show this year. Our show was just record numbers. We ended up with like almost 20 cars more than our biggest show ever. Uh, it's just a tremendous turnout. But this car, as you know, is called the Ash Kicker. It's a 1957 Beetle that was, uh, well, kind of buried in Mount St. Helens uh, ash and took some uh, of the ash and the artist painted it into the side of the car. So what you're looking at here, this beautiful mural of Mount St. Helens is actually containing ash from that day when that uh, horrible explosion happened. And um, this car is just, <laughs> I still can't believe how big it is. One of the things I ask, you know, what's the top speed? The top speed is only about 45, 50 miles an hour. And that's uh, due to the big wheels that are on here. You ended up with some big reduction boxes on there, bus style, to get the uh, gear ratios down low enough to be able to push these wheels so he can't get up to any speed at all. But he says when it moves the speed on the road, it just feels a little dangerous. It feels like it's, you know, kind of floating around because, well, the car really doesn't weigh that much. When you add these big tires and wheels on it, they pretty much dictate what the car is going to do. So the, uh, the thing's a little scary to drive, but this thing is just, just absolutely gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and if you know anything about its history it was of course built up in the uh, Pacific Northwest and it just happened to turn up down here and Chris always wanted this car since he was a kid one day it turned up for sale like not far from his home right down here in Louisiana area and uh, he couldn't believe it himself so he went and made an offer and just picked the thing up immediately as soon as he saw it interiors uh, pretty typically stock it's the exterior of this car that really sets it off. I mean, I'd, I would just <laughs> love to try to get in and out of this thing. You guys would laugh at me getting in and out of the Puma, but I think I'd be equally as challenged to get in and out of this. But you see just how small the Beetle body actually is when it's up on top of these huge wheels. Huge tires and wheel combination here. Um, I believe they're 44s or something. I, I don't know. They're, they're huge. What's it say on there? Well, it does say 18 by 44, and there's your answer. Just massive, absolutely incredible. On the front end here to get it raised up. First off, there's a body raise. It looks like it's about three inch body raise. It's a piece that goes all the way around and the heater channels raise the body. The entire frame head has been removed. So there's a dropped frame head up here, which drops the beam way down. The beam is a super wide beam. And I don't know if it has any um, torsion springs in it in the same way that most Beetles do. I mean, it might be there, but it does, of course, have the extra long shocks that are on there. But it does appear to have stock or stock-like trailing arms on the front. It does have a rack and pinion. And, of course, it's got a police siren in there. <laughs> I'm sorry, fire siren in there. In the back, you got some very, very long extended trailing arms. Very necessary when you get the thing up this high. A set of dual shocks, there's the reduction boxes. And some extra long spring pates to tie it all together. And actually they're not that long. He'd like to raise it up more because the suspension travel causes the wheel to kind of get close to that fender. In fact, it has 
clipped a little bit of it off in the past and caused some cracks, so he trimmed just a little bit more. But he's gonna definitely raise it up some more. Shouldn't be too much to it. Probably gonna need a longer arm and a longer spring plate, but he's gonna boost that thing up. It's kind of funny seeing the little drive axles in there being as small as they are on something incredibly large like this. <laughs> Here's the engine all chromed out. Not sure what size it is, but I'll put it up on the screen. I'll do a little more video interview here and uh, see what we can find out about it. But this thing is just absolutely incredible. Definitely one of my show favorites. Just huge. <laughs> It's a 1600 dual port engine that you're looking at here with an upgraded uh, dual carburetor and uh, of course a nice merge header exhaust that goes, well it's about six feet high. <laughs> Incredible. Actually it might be a little more than that. It looks like it's a little taller than I am so it's probably more about 6'4". That thing's way up there in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. These are Porsche 356 drum brakes that you're looking at on here. Big aluminum and very expensive. I would have chose to convert to a disc, but to keep its originality based on when this car was built, he chose to put the original 356ers back on when they were worn out and had problems. So that's some, uh, <laughs> some big coin was spent there for certain. Those are not cheap. In the back, it looks like they might also be the same as in the front. <laughs> Incredible. Doug, I do question how well it stops though, even when you hit 50 miles an hour. <laughs> Again, more for originality's sake, you got a single circuit master cylinder up there, not something you would ordinarily see on a vehicle. Any more in modern age, unless somebody wanted to keep true to being original. And, uh, well, this was built that way. Again, it's a 1957 Beetle. I'd like to add that those aren't just reduction boxes. Those are two reduction boxes on each side. <laughs> in tandem. Double reduced. Now, I don't know what the gear ratios are in a transmission, but to see that, that, uh... Wow, okay. <laughs> that tells me a lot more about what it took to push these wheels. I did not see that there was two reduction boxes on there. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And an engineering just right there. Just a marvel. Somebody was able to take two reduction boxes from Volkswagen, a bus, typically you'd find those on, and make them fit in tandem like that with an IRS drive, which you probably know they never had that. They always were swing axle in. And somebody made it work. Just made it all work. That stuff to me is always incredible when somebody adapts these parts that are off the shelf to function in such a way. There it is. Yep, that's a typical Volkswagen for you.
very quiet when it idles. Very, very quiet. Maybe because the exhaust pipe is higher than my head. All the sound goes straight up. <laughs> now the mist is over. It yeah. does drive. Oh, we knew it would drive. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Oh man, such a good day. Had a lot of fun today. Everybody here, thank you guys, Rare Volkswagen Club. Uh, we had this show. Um, just thank you everybody that helped contribute, everybody that showed up to make uh, just record setting numbers this year. Overly impressed, so happy. Again, thanks so much. Thanks to all my subscribers, thanks to all my supporters. Licky, likey, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.